Take a look at these two pieces of art. Which do you think was made by an AI? And which do you think was made by a human? I'm sorry, it was actually a trick question. They were both made by an AI. We like to think that creativity is the one thing that sets us apart from everything else, be it animal or machine. We humans, also we like to think, are the only ones capable of conjuring up something new and valuable just by the merits of our own imagination. But recent developments in artificial intelligence, or AI, has thrown into question this distinctly human characteristic. AI has been able to produce art, write music, and even generate poetry. So, in this video, let's explore AI and their creative works, and begin to question whether creativity really makes humans unique. This is the portrait of Edmund Bellamy, a painting produced by an AI which was made by the Paris Collective Obvious. This painting was generated by using an algorithm and a dataset of 15,000 portraits painted between the 14th and 20th centuries. This portrait is what it came up with. The piece is even signed with an algorithm used to create it. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. It's a bit rough around the edges. And yes, I'd give you that one there. But remember, a machine made this, not a sentient being capable of thought. Would you like to know how much it sold for? Well, it was expected to make $10,000, but at auction it sold for $432,500, nearly 45 times its estimate. AI has officially entered the art world, and if this painting marks the start of a trend, AI painters will be fast outselling humans in the years to come. The AI behind these abstract ink prints were developed by a New Zealand based artist, Tom White. Much like the paintings from before, they were created by using a neural network trained to recognise thousands of images in its database. When asked to produce an image, for example, a rabbit, it will attempt to make a representation of one by using the many thousands of images to work from. And you'd get a painting a little like this. Other works include a chicken, a killer whale, and a cello. These ink drawings are not accurate one-to-one -one renderings of the original image, but they're not intended to be. They're abstract paintings, much like the works of Kandinsky, Picasso and Miro. The emphasis is on colour, shape and line, not necessarily on realism. If you ask me, the fact that a machine, incapable of thought, is able to create these kinds of abstract works from scratch is astonishing. These two projects are just a selection of a growing movement of AI artists. There's a fascinating website of the same name that showcases their work and I highly recommend giving it a look. There's artists like Mario Klingman, who have developed neural networks that generate antique portraits in real time. Or Google's former artist in residence, Song Wen Chung, who has built an AI that can draw alongside her to make these fascinating duet paintings. And finally, these real-time simulations made by Rafik Anadol conjure up imagined buildings, objects and people based on millions of images in its database. It's a process he describes as machine dreaming. Surprisingly, the world of AI and music is a bit more established. There's a great variety of musical compositions and songs that have not been made by humans. Take, for example, the Luxembourg-based AI composer, Iver, a program that is able to produce soundtracks for a bunch of musical genres, especially classical. Recently, it wrote its first rock song, On The Edge. Now for rights reasons, I can only play a small sample. Here it is. Iver has also gone on to co-produce two songs, Lovesick and I Am AI, with singer Taryn Southern. You can have a listen to them in the links below, as well as sources for everything else discussed in this video. I'll also add a link to Iver's own Spotify profile, where you can listen to more of its music. Perhaps the reason why music is much more easily replicated by an AI is that music, especially Western music, is built up by a series of rules, regulations and guidelines. Harmonic intervals are set in numbers like thirds, fifths and sevenths. The duration of notes are organised by fractions, like half notes and quarter notes, and certain musical pieces must fit into algorithmic structures, like most pop songs have the algebraic AAPA shape. Admittedly, I'm simplifying a bit here, but there is a strong case to be made for mathematics underpinning music. And since maths is the language of artificial intelligence and coding, Musical compositions are something that can be replicated by non-sentient machines with relative ease. 
Another creative enterprise AI has had a go at is poetry. As with music, poems often follow rules and structures that can be programmed into an AI or an algorithm. For example, a Shakespearean sonnet follows these strict guidelines. A Shakespearean sonnet has 14 iambic pentameter lines divided into three quatrains and a couplet. The rhyme scheme is usually ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG. Each quatrain presents one idea. The rhymed couplet usually ties the whole composition together by succinctly stating the main idea. Technical jargon out the way, this is all to say that poetry has some specific rules. So let's see an example. First is Shakespeare himself. Let those who are in favour with their stars, of public honour and proud titles boast, whilst I, whom fortune of such triumph bars, in looked for joy in that I honour most. This one was created by IBM. Was full his light, so long upon his train, he softly left from dark of shining plain. And to the morn, to set her on her way, and all her fellowship was passed away. Now I'm not sure what either one is actually saying in their sonnets, but it seems that not even the genius of Shakespeare is fully safe from AI imitation. But I'll let you be the judge of that. And now for some nature haikus that I came up with along with the help of an online generator. Dampish a forest, a common strong ant wallows, watching the puppy. Windy afternoon, a more passionate fish trots because of the fly. Shaggy eventide, when a fallow dry deer sneers under the best friend. Okay, not my best work. Blame it on the AI. Looking back at these paintings, songs and poetry developed by AI, and all begs the question, are they really the product of a creative artificial intelligence, or is it simply the work of genius software developers who are behind it? If you ask me, I suspect the latter. The real credit for these works is probably owed to the developers. They were the ones who constructed them, wrote the algorithms, and ultimately dictated what type of creative works the AI would make. At best, AI can replicate, but not create. For example, the machine that made the portrait of Edmund Bellamy is incapable of producing those abstract paintings that Tom White's AI could, simply because it's not been programmed to. Each AI system can only make one type of predetermined painting, so the machine is not really being creative by itself, per se. But it's only a matter of time when AI will be able to produce works not planned by its creators, works that are new and valuable in their own right, independent of human interference or predetermined programming. And once that happens, we'll no longer be able to say that humans are alone in possessing creativity. The 21st century has only just begun. The fact that machines are already producing paintings, music and poetry in the first place is a sure sign that the next major creative movement, non-human art, is already on its way. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to Hochelaga for more. It seems that my biblical studies videos are really popular, so more of those are on the way. I enjoy keeping my content varied, so stick around for more. Hopefully I'll give you topics that surprise you. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.